Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cloud on Air. These are live webinars put on every Tuesday by Google Cloud Platform. My name is Chad Jennings, and I'm a product manager for BigQuery. Thanks, Chad. My name is Soleil Kelly. I'm a product marketer on the data analytics team here at Google Cloud. Um, and today we're going to be talking about geospatial analysis and BigQuery, uh, in particular doing that with BigQuery GIS. Uh, do note, you can ask questions at any time on the platform. We have Googlers on standby to answer your questions. Uh, so our, our goal today is really a couple fold. Uh, we want to A, introduce you to the BigQuery GIS service if you're not yet familiar with that, uh, and B, get you up and running so you can add GIS into your toolbox uh, as an analyst. And uh, let's jump right in. So spatial context really matters from our perspective. Uh, maps provide this really unique type of context. Um, and when we think of context, think of the who, what, when, where, whys, and hows. Mm. Uh, in particular, um, that, that where, when you add your data and you put it on a map, it just instantly becomes real, becomes relatable as a human. And that's really powerful to help you make better business decisions. Um, it, second of all, gives you this rich uh, extra set of data um, at your disposal. And there's, there's a nice benefit there because when you put your data on that map and you join it with other things, you instantly have context in physical space, right? Those maps connect that physical space to that very sometimes intangible space of data analysis on a computer connected to the cloud, right? Um, and so yeah, sp uh, maps really matter from, from the human perspective and also from the business perspective. So uh, take for example, uh, you know, this map in Denver. I might be a retailer uh, in this particular location in Denver and I, I would want to uh, analyze where my, my customers are, the dem different demographics from, from different neighborhoods in the Denver area. Um, and maybe I'm considering opening up a new store in a different neighborhood. I would also want to factor in you know, other competitors in, that, in the area and, and think about different physical geographies that are present in the space as well. And when I actually overlay my demographic analysis on top of a map, as opposed to just looking at tables of data, uh, I instantly just have more context. I can see where the freeways are that might be gridlocked during the time I want my customers to come to my store. Uh, I can see physical ge geographic boundaries like bodies of water or mountain ranges and, and, and things of this nature. So uh, really useful to be able to contextualize your data in, the con in, uh, in maps for sure. Now if you have just a small set of data, you can, you can imagine almost doing this analysis by hand if you had just a few hundred customers and they're all coming from a certain neighborhood. Uh, easy enough, but in our, our age of information and the, the accessibility we have to just buku data from all the open data sets with, uh, you know, from weather to census data and, and, and other sources, uh, you can really go, you know, pretty wild from an, from an analytics perspective thinking about all the fun things you can do with space. Um, and for that, uh, you know, you might be thinking about you know, if you had millions of customers, let's just hypothetically say, um, you wanted to join that uh, with some of those bigger, bigger data sets, you might need a little bit more horsepower to actually conduct that GIS analysis. Uh, and, and for this, we're, we're incredibly excited to have launched BigQuery GIS mm. uh, into beta um, a few weeks back here in September. And really what this means for, for analysts, uh, especially those that are already using BigQuery, is that, hey, we're bringing the GIS functionality right directly into the data warehouse. You no longer would need to export your data elsewhere and bring it into a purpose-built GIS application, right? All that core functionality is, is right there on top of your data and accessible right there. Um, and, and what's really unique and different about this service is you know, combining this cloud GIS functionality with the, the raw power of BigQuery and its massively parallel processing or MPP architecture um, to do big data, to kind of merge big data and GIS in the cloud. And that's, that's super exciting. We're really excited to bring that to the market. And Chad, being product manager for BigQuery, um, is going to dive into a little bit more details on this. So. Yeah, and I just wanted to say, though, that um, you know, the, the, that intersection of big data and GIS is a thing that we're really excited to address in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, so, you know, with the launch of this, BigQuery is the only cloud MPP enterprise data warehouse to support GIS data types and functions as first class citizens. And so we're really proud of that. And the engineering team has worked on this um, actually in conjunction with the Earth Engine team. So we use the same uh, computational libraries under the covers that power things like Google Maps, Earth Engine, Google Earth. So it's really bringing a lot of really awesome Google assets, you know, to our customers, which is fun. Super cool. All right, but first off, you may have a question of what is this BigQuery thing anyway? <laughs> Let's start there. <laughs> sure. So BigQuery is Google Cloud's enterprise data warehouse. So you interact with it uh, in SQL, um, and it is serverless and fully managed. And what that means is you don't have to mess with spinning up nodes or spinning up clusters. We handle all of that for you. And so what that means is you bring your data, you bring your workloads, 
you load them both, you press the button that says run query, and we spin up all the compute resources and storage resources that you need. That's what fully managed means to us. Um, this, this product scans, uh, goes super big and super fast. Our largest customers um, have hundreds of petabytes of storage with us, um, you know, and our largest queries you know, regularly exceed 20 or almost 30 billion rows. So big data GIS together, right? There, That's there's the, that intangible data analytics thing in the, in the yeah, computer like, box thing again. Yeah, right? really, like what does 30 <laughs> trillion actually mean? I have no idea, <laughs> yeah. just a lot. Um, so here's what BigQuery GIS actually means, right? We're supporting ge geographic data types, geographic functions, and we're going to go through um, these in some detail in just a second here. Um, and then, like, kind of where the payoff happens is we're also launching something called, or we have launched something called BigQuery GeoViz, which is a lightweight visualization tool to put all of those cool data that you just figured out onto a map. All right, so uh, a little context setting. Why bother? Um, Euclid would look at this map and go, that's perfectly fine, right? That is a straight line between two points, shortest distance, that's how you should go. Except, as we all know now, right? Euclid didn't know this, but we do. Curved Earth, uh, the shortest distance between these particular two points, Seattle and Stuttgart, anyone curious, um, is a, a great circle route. And you know, to be honest, even though I come from a navigation background, um, I, I never really quite got what a great circle route truly meant until I looked at it visualized on Google Earth from space. So Euclid was right, straight, distant, or straight line between two points, that is the right way to go if you want to get there fast, and that is what a straight line looks like uh, on the curved space. So with geographic data types and functions, we want to honor the curvature of the Earth, right? Yeah. Seems like a big thing to honor, yeah. um, and actually do these calculations exactly right. So these are the data types that we're supporting, uh, supporting, 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 <laughs> um, point, line string, polygon, all the way down to collection. So it's quite a rich data set. All right, and now uh, Soleil, take us away with the functions. Yeah, for sure. So we are, um, you know, we love our SQL verbs, and we've just brought <laughs> in about 40 new new verbs into the BigQuery as first class citizens again, and that conform to the PostGIS project spatial type uh, function uh, uh, convention, the ST underscore. Uh, and we have a, a number of different functions here you can see in the table on the right. Uh, if you are familiar with PostGIS, this will be a walk in the park and, and you can uh, maybe grab a, a super quick glass of water or something. But if you're just getting started and want to just know like, at a high level what these functions are all about and the kind of the things that you can do on your geospatial data, um, we're just going to dive into that super quick. Uh, constructors, as the name suggests, these are really about building net new geographies from existing coordinates, so say a lat-long pair, or, or existing geographies like a couple of polygons or lines and making a collection. Mm -hmm. uh, so the diagram here demonstrates you know, a set of five different lat-long pairs and, and you know, making a line out of those, right? Parsers and formatters, I mean, obviously we want some interoperability between different formats, and so these are all about creating or exporting di geographies into different formats, so from binary to a, to a polygon, from GeoJSON to, uh, to, to text and things like this. Uh, these are the, the functions that you would use to do that uh, so that you have a little bit more interop with other, um, with other programs. Transformations, again, so these are creating new geographies, uh, similar to constructors, um, but they're having the similar properties as their input uh, geographies. So here uh, in the diagram, we've highlighted uh, the centroid function. So if you wanted to find the center of some sort of zip code um, polygon, uh, you'd use that function to create a point, a lat long uh, set uh, out of that uh, existing geography and many other types of transformations naturally as well. Uh, predicates, so great for filtering, um, you know, is this region, are the data within this region uh, existing within an, another region uh, in this particular zip code or something, you know, yes or no, or true false questions rather, uh, so uh, great for filtering your geographic data and, and, uh, and whatnot. Accessors, so sometimes you just need to know a little bit of the, um, the metadata about your geography mm -hmm. data, uh, and so for this we will, uh, we have a number of functions here for like, yeah, how many vertices or how many points are there as part of this polygon? So you can ask those types of questions. Is it a point? Is it a line? Is it a polygon? If you just get a whole bunch of uh, geographic data, you could ask those types of questions there. Measures, as the name suggests, pretty, pretty intuitive, but what's the perimeter? What's the area? Distances between points, et cetera. Uh, these are real core functionality. Right, uh, not flashy, but important. No, and, no, and here, su here's the flash. Super, super important. I mean, these are the, like, when you immediately think about uh, GIS data, at least for me, you're asking those questions, like, wait, what's the distance between X and Y? And, you know, these are the questions you often have, but 
But yeah, joins are. So this is where the real magic um, starts. And doing joins on geographic data sets, like in the demos that we'll talk about in a second, we actually join on zip code, but we're actually joining on the zip code integer. Right? Mm -hmm. With these functions, you can actually, or sorry, the, the, the integer that measure or that identifies the zip code. With these, you can actually do joins on the geography, like you know, you know, find all the points that are in these two data sets, join them together with any of these predicates. So th this, this, is like, th this is where the magic really happens here. OK, um, but in terms of like uh, eye candy, this is the magic. Um, so this is BigQuery GeoViz. And you can see from the GIF here that um, you can you know, compose a query, run a query, and then style the results in a map all interactively. It's a lightweight tool, so this isn't going to handle you know, millions upon millions. You know, it's, it's limited to about 2,000 uh, points. But it solves the use case of, I'm an analyst. I wrote a query. Please let me see that on a map just yep. to make sure that like, I'm sane or that I got the results that yep. I expected. Yep. Um, Great for ad hoc exploration. Yeah. Exactly. And if you've got more serious mapping needs, um, you can export a table from BigQuery into GCS and then import that into Earth Engine. Um, and the, here you use JavaScript and you can create maps of like, arbitrary complexity and like, arbitrary beautifulness. Is that a word? It should be. Stop. There it is. <laughs> Okay, doke. So we'll we'll dive into uh, a couple uh, a couple demos here. And so referencing the example that Soleil talked about earlier, we're going to pretend that we are um, retail site selectors. And so we have a store. And Soleil, the demographic, the target demographic of your store is twenty-five to thirty-four. Tw how about twenty-five, 25 to forty-four? Since 25 that's twenty-five to forty-four. Yeah. Since that's what I prepped. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's, let's do, that do that one. one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so here, let's uh, let's cut over, let's cut over to the demo. And so, what we're we, oh yeah, what are we looking at? Here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is the BigQuery Web UI, um, and what we see here is on the on the left panel here, there are a bunch of like basically asset navigators, right? You can look at your queries, you can look at saved queries, the job history that you've run in this project. You can even look at data sets. Um, down here, I'll double click into the BigQuery public data, and there's you know, a whole bunch of stuff. The baseball data set's pretty fun. We're not going to do that one today. Sorry. Um, but Unless my customers are baseball folks. Right. Yeah. Right now, it's a retail shop. Okay. Any case, um, the left panel here to navigate assets. The, this window right here is the Query Composer window. So this is where you write your SQL, um, and then you get your results back down here in the lower pane. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through this query real quick. So one thing that I like to do a lot um, in SQL is use these with statements to pull parameters up to the top of a query. It just means that if you want to share that query with somebody or if you want to you know, adjust a parameter, you don't have to go searching through lines and lines and lines of SQL to get to it. Um, so we're going to set parameters. Um, we're going to pick latitude and longitude. Right? That's the center of Seattle. So we'll pretend we're going to put a store there. Um, you could get this very simply by like, you know, just Googling center of Seattle or Googling an address and it will return you the lat long. Um, and then we're going to stipulate, for this one, we're going to stipulate the radius as one mile. Okay. Um, and then this set of code pulls all the zip codes within that area. So it uses this STD within. So it creates a point from the latitude and longitude and then Make sure, and then it looks at the, the zip area latitude and longitude um, and finds all of the zip codes that are 1,609 meters or within 1,609 meters. Um, that happens to be one mile. One mile, then. That's right. Thank you. Um, the next set of this code is where we're going to pull the stats. Um, and so this table that we're looking at is actually available in public data set um, inside of BigQuery. Um, it's called, no surprise, population by zip 2010. And so um, what this code is doing is simply adding up the population totals from these different demographic buckets. Um, this data set only has age and gender. You know, if you look um, at the US Census page or the American Community Survey, the Fact Finder page is really useful for this. You know, they have um, many, many, many more demographic buckets. But we'll focus on these. Um, and then at the end, we're just going to pick all of those zip codes, um, the zip code stats, and the zip code geometries, um, and we're going to pull them out into a single table. And so run the query, and it was cached, right? The 0.017 is the, it used the cache. I prepped this ahead of time because I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to burden you all with watching the query run. Um, but what you can see here is this table. So here's 
98154. This is actually a tiny little zip code that's just for the purposes of the US Post Office, so no people live in it. Um, but you can see, you know, these are the populations, and then here's the polygon. And that polygon uh, string is totally parsable by human readers. And you look at that and you're like, oh, minus 122.333564. Yeah, that's downtown Seattle, right? I can see it. Yeah. Right, no. <laughs> Nobody does that. So what we really want to do is we want to see that on a map. So let's walk through how BigQuery GeoViz works. So I've actually pre-populated this one as well. And you can see that I've increased the radius to 15 miles. Um, it's exactly the same query, so I've copied from the Composer window and pasted into the BigQuery GeoViz window um, and run the results to get this map over here. And what's cool about this tool is that you can style interactively. So the fill color for this chloropleth, I have chosen to be um, population of 65 plus. But if I wanted to change that, I could in real time. As a matter of fact, we're going to dive in to the north end of Seattle here. You know what, that's a little bit opaque for my taste. I'm going to lighten the fill opacity. We're gonna make it 0.5. There, that lightens it up a little bit. It's a little easier to see. Go back to fill color, and we're gonna look at a couple different demographics. So demographic number one. There's my 25 to 44, thank right, you. Right on, so let's see where your target demographic is. We'll change the range a little bit since oh, they're- like the, Yeah, the max is 21. Yeah. 21,000 there, got yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And so what you see is if we zero in on this zip code, so 98103, um, you know, there's a concentration here. Um, and there's a dearth of your target demographic in 98199. So like, don't put your store, don't put your store out there. Nope. Um, but what I wanted to point out here was, let's go ahead and have a look at, well, let's, let's expand it. Let's say you were looking for college age students. Um, and then this zip code here lights up. What's ha there? Uh, there happens to be university there, right? right. Yeah. And we haven't even changed the range, but you can see it's actually a similar, similar range set there. But, but oh, right, yeah, I can do that. Very high concentration there of college age students. Right. Yep. So like, no, no surprise, the University of Washington lights up. And then if we look at the 65 plus, and I adjust the range here to 7,000, you can see that the you can see the population just starting to move not not just north but out right. So this is you know flight from the urban center I suppose, yep. um, and like folks uh, uh, folks in this demographic are moving away from the city center. Okay, so what we've shown here is the ability to do geospatial analysis and then style a map and visualize a map in real time. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to share this with folks, right, you just take a screenshot or share yep. the query. You can even uh, make that nice and big. Oh yeah, here, it's the. So I'm sorry, we can you know, zoom out and see the entire, the entire extent. Yep. Okay, doke. Um, so, geospatial information is useful partly because it's not focused in any one particular area. Um, so I ran this query again um, for New York. And so again, this is the zero to twenty-four demographic. And uh, if we just click over to this other tab here, you can see that, um, and sorry, this one, let's see, the styling, this one is the 65 plus. I'll switch back and forth between these tabs. You can see that the, um, these neighborhoods out here in the, south of, uh, in the south of New York get quite a bit darker. So what that means is like, you know, Folks are, folks are kind of moving out to the beach as they, as they get tired of the city life. OK, so, so that's interesting. So now we've given these retail site selectors the tools to go ahead and look at you know, different areas and see what the demographics are. You know, to be honest, zip codes are pretty coarse-grained geometry for this analysis. You'd rather use census tracts or yep. census blocks. Again, you can get those from the American Community Survey page. Like, go to the one, go to the download tab. That's where you can download like you know census tracts or zip codes for the entire United States and, and bring that into uh, BigQuery. Um, we're going to look at this last query here because this is kind of the summary table. So, same kind of same kind of construction. So, width and stats by zip code. This is actually the same code as before. And what we're going to do here is we're going to run those stats for a collection of radii. So we're going to create a summary table, like show me the list of people um, that live 1, 10, 20, 50 miles uh, from, my, 
from my chosen location. And again, we're using the BigQuery GIS functions mm -hmm. to construct that filter. All right, and then here's the resulting table. And now what we're gonna, this is not GIS, but it is super convenient. You look at this button here called Explore in Data Studio, you can actually click on that and that will materialize the results in a Data Studio session. Um, let's go ahead, so let's see. The dimension we're gonna use is R, so that's the radius, we'll get rid of that one. And then, we'll, let's see, we'll do population. While, while Chad is pulling in these different demographic groups as well too, Data Studio is something we just launched into GA. Uh, last week, which is super exciting. And this particular functionality, that, that integration between BigQuery and Data Studio, that one-click UI experience is something that we launched earlier this summer at, at, uh, at our Cloud Next event. And that's been uh, one of, a, it's been a very popular feature. Our customers have been asking about it. Uh, it was really nice to be able to deliver that and people have been responding real well to that. It's been fun. Excellent. And it's just super quick for, you know, just like we had the, the BigQuery GeoViz, uh, application to be able to, to quickly explore your geospatial data. You can do the same thing here with, with summary tables, with other data, to, to quickly visualize it in Data Studio. Yeah, and so with just a few clicks and a little bit of you know, clumsy dragging of these little <laughs> yeah. tickets, yeah. Um, you can create a chart, um, you can then save it, uh, copy it to a report, and share it with folks, and they can interact um, you know, with your query as well. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we wanted, to, uh, we wanted to get that one out. We've got one more demo to talk about, yeah. um, which is actually a totally different perspective. So now, like we're done with being real estate retail. moguls or, okay. or retail or re moguls. Where <laughs> now we're city planners from Chicago, um, and so our customer GeoTab actually built this application. And so what you're seeing here is a map of hazardous driving behavior. And you might yep. naturally ask yourself the question, well, how does GeoTab know anything about hazardous driving application? Great question. Thanks for asking. GeoTab is an asset tracking company and a telematics company. And so, for example, FedEx, uh, not FedEx, UPS, UPS, all the UPS trucks have a box about yay big in their truck. And that box measures location, velocity, acceleration, plus a host of other variables. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So GeoTab actually has an incredibly rich data set collected by 1.2 million vehicles running around the country. I think their data set, their daily intake is about 3 billion points. All of that gets stored inside of BigQuery, which you'll find out soon is a very convenient place to do it. So what the map shows here is areas in Chicago that register hazardous driving behavior. And that's characterized by extreme amounts of acceleration, either forward and back or lateral. Yep. And what this left panel is going to do is we're actually going to combine a few different technologies here in just a few clicks. So we have BigQuery GIS, mm -hmm. um, which is going to call out the points from Chicago. We have obviously Google Maps, um, and we have BigQuery ML, which is going to actually, they've actually trained a model to predict hazardous driving behavior, i.e. those accelerations, based on weather data. Now, the next question is like, where'd you get the weather data? Another excellent question. <laughs> Um, he's, he's awesome. The, the NOAA actually hosts weather data in BigQuery. They do. And so joining your data with weather data is literally only a join away because it's all hosted in the same backend storage. All right, so here, that's enough context setting. Let's get to it. So we're going to dial up some weather conditions. So I'm reducing the temperature. So we're going to make it winter. Um, reduce the visibility. I'm going to order a snowstorm, and then we're going to pretend it's the holiday season, and we're going to bump up the traffic volume. And then I just clicked Run Predictive Analysis, and we get a map that's a lot hotter than the original one. OK, that's interesting. That's now although I, colder because it's winter. It's hotter in terms of hazardous distracting behavior. But. I totally get you. <laughs> Any case. Um, we're going we're gonna to look in at one of these because as the traffic planner for the city of Chicago, like we want to investigate these points and see what we can do. Um, and in particular, there's one that we're going to dive into right here because, oh, here it is, because it is just down the street from a school. So being elected officials, right, we're going to prioritize safety of constituents. We're going to prioritize safety of vulnerable constituents. Focus on hazardous driving around schools. Yeah, and efficiency through the network of streets. For all. Yeah, we just you know. we want to keep our kids safe. All right, so what's going on here? So it's interesting that there's hazardous driving behavior in inclement weather, but what's going on? So this is where we get a little bit of a benefit from being in the Google ecosystem, and we're going to drop the Street View avatar into this scene. Um, and so we're going to turn around. So here's the school. 
and then I'm going to move just a little bit east and look at what's here. So I'll make the screen a bit bigger for you and we'll zoom in just a touch. It's a bike rack. There you go. Right next to an alleyway. So, you know, I agreed. I dealt up a, uh, a winter day, but maybe some kids are riding their bike down this alleyway and causing some kind of traffic congestion or traffic issue here. Um, let's spin around and see what's going on. Um, I don't see any traffic signage, right? So just down here at the end of this picture is where that hazardous driving behavior was occurring. Um, but there's no traffic signage here. You know, maybe the right remediation is to preposition some sand. Maybe the right remediation is to put a stop sign in here. Even a crosswalk. Yeah. Or crosswalk. Yeah, yeah good mm -hmm. point. But what we what we what we've enabled here is our city planner can now scan the entire city using GIS, ML, BigQuery, Google Maps, public Street data. View, public data, yeah. all without leaving their chair. And that is pretty darn cool. Oh, here I'll take it out of the full screen mode. All right. Anyway, so thank you for going on that little uh, that little journey. So we did that demo. We just finished this one. I skipped ahead in the slides a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and? Yeah, so this is um, obviously amazing things that you can do using this functionality. Um, tons more resources we wanted to arm you with. Uh, first of all, if you want to get started in BigQuery, you can just go right to the uh, Cloud Console. That's the first link there. Uh, that particular BigQuery GeoViz application uh, for just you know, visualizing your SQL queries uh, on that map, is the, is the, there's the link there for you as well. Tons of documentation, very thorough. All the, the functions that I went through, those are all detailed out one by one in the documentation, which is really helpful. We also have a link for all those public data sets that we host in BigQuery uh, that's in our GCP marketplace. You can also, of course, go find any, any of the open data sets out there and bring them into your particular projects as well. Um, and then too, we have a, a Stack Overflow um, uh, topic here on Google BigQuery with the, with the GIS particular tag. And this is where we'll post, uh, Chad, we'll post all these queries sometime in the next few days. Yep. yep. Um, so that you can play around with those. Again, you saw how the facility of just putting in a lat long pair for that center point of your retail ring study. Uh, but you could conceivably do that at any location yeah. uh, that you might want to explore. L let me yep. speak specifically. If there are people watching who mm -hmm. are either in retail or in like television or radio ratings, then like these queries are very readily extensible to census tracts, census yep. blocks, or or DMAs. Mm -hmm. um, so like we didn't we didn't go to that extent because you know we just wanted to keep things simple here. But if that's your industry, then uh, use those as your template, and you can do these analyses and show them on uh, BigQuery GeoViz. Great, thanks. Well, that's what we had to show for today. Thank you, Chad, yeah. for walking through those demos. Those are super cool and and. Folks, everybody stay tuned for live Q&A. We'll be back in just a couple minutes to cover those. Thank you. Great. Welcome back, everybody. So we're here now for the live Q&A portion of our webinar. And we got several great questions from the audience. Uh, so we'll just kind of dive into those and, uh, and do one at a time. So first off, uh, I have a few Esri shapefiles I'd like to use. Mm -hmm. Super, super common. Can I use them with BigQuery GIS? The answer is yes, although you would need to convert that shapefile format uh, into either well-known text uh, or some of the other formats that we can then bring in, right? Yeah, and we, we got this question a lot right, yeah. at, right after we launched the alpha. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so we actually have, and we'll put it up in the Stack Overflow topic, um, we actually have a, uh, a document that one of our colleagues wrote that details exactly how to do, like, you know, what's the right tool to use and how do you bring it in. But, you know, essentially Soleil is right. You have to convert the shapefile into the formats that we support, um, and then you can look at them just like we did in the demos. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question, does BigQuery.js have geocoding capabilities? Yeah, so we rely on the Google Maps APIs for this. So BigQuery, BigQuery itself does not, um, but you can, like, in a different part of your program, you can like call an API and augment, you know, augment the table that you're looking at um, with the geocoded data, or you can uh, you can call an external API as part of a data flow job. So you can like read out a BigQuery column through a data flow job, then call that API, augment the data, and then write that back into BigQuery. For visualizations and mapping, what other BI tools can I connect BigQuery to? So BigQuery has, I mean, a number of uh, you know native connections to 
uh, to different uh, BI tools like Tableau and Looker and Click and, and, and things like this. Um, specifically for mapping uh, and connecting to uh, you know, your BigQuery GIS functions, so long as those tools support custom SQL queries, and so long as they can render geographic data types, uh, they should be able to, uh, to leverage this technology. Uh, and one thing uh, as well is you probably want to bring that into a GeoJSON format, right, to, to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, Tableau is an example of, uh, uh, of a viz tool that you'll want to use the custom queries to, uh, mm -hmm. to leverage BigQuery GIS. Um, and then Looker actually, uh, Looker actually supports BigQuery GIS. Okay, wonderful. Cool, next question. Does BigQuery GIS support 3D geometries and measure values, XYM or XYZM? I'll let you take that. Oh, um, I actually don't know the answer to this one. Uh, the answer is no. Oh. Yeah, we well. don't support the, the, <laughs> the Z measure. <laughs> um, Thanks for that one. <laughs> Um, hey, these are these are questions that people are having. <laughs> you know, um, what does does BigQuery JS come with geospatial statistical data, uh, for instance, parcel map data that I can use to join with my business data? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so, not really. So BigQuery is so BigQuery GIS comes with BigQuery. Yep. BigQuery comes with Google Cloud Platform, and inside Google Cloud Platform are a whole host of public data sets. And we went through some of these, or I showed you a very small subset of the list. Um, if there are some public data sets that have some of that geospatial statistical data that you want, like I, I do happen to know that um, zip code land and water areas are there, mm -hmm. um, things like that, um, you might be able to find them in the public data sets. If not, then you're gonna have to import them using, this, using the procedure that we'll publish um, in that Stack Overflow uh, topic. Uh, next question looks like we've, we've already addressed with respect to geocoding. Um, for a final question there, for non-programmers working with large amounts of data, is there a resource for query language to facilitate pulling or geolocating data? So I would just, for this, if you're not a programmer, I would just uh, direct your attention to the BigQuery documentation for GIS. There are a ton of resources there. Again, it's all uh, fully outlined, all of the different functions that are there. There are several tutorials as well. Um, we'll post some links to the Stack Overflow uh, there as well, and yeah, I just want to add to that. Yeah, yeah, I do, definitely. Um, so, like, as we all know, right, we, we work with geospatial data, um, and for those that have, know that there are data sets like, all over the place and in all sorts of different formats. And there's, like, aside from shape files, like, which is, I suppose, a bit of an industry standard, but there's just, like, GDB, MDB, there's a whole lot of stuff out there. We don't have a SQL verb that says, like, go get this data set and bring it in. However, it's a really good idea, and we've already written it down. Um, but what you will have to do is if you've got, if you're a non-programmer, um, have a look at the, the resources. Again, this article about pulling in other types of data, other types of data formats into BigQuery. Um, and then the process, to, the process to copy that over requires a couple lines of code, but you can literally copy and paste from the article and put that into the console. Um, and the directions there are clear enough that even I was able to get it right on the very first time. Amazing. I was not the author too, so I was actually testing. <laughs> Great. Uh, well, thanks everybody. That concludes our Q&A portion. Um, do stay tuned. We have another webinar following this one. Uh, it's called Visualize 2030. Uh, this is about a data storytelling contest that Google Cloud is hosting around the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, and that'll be coming up in just a few moments live from New York City. Uh, thanks again, everybody. My name's Soleil. I'm Chad, and happy mapping. Woohoo!